you're not alone. If you need someone to talk to today, please contact Crisis Services Canada by either calling them at 1-833-456-4566 all hours of the day, or you can text them at 45645 at 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Time. Remember, you're not alone, and Crisis Services Canada is here to help. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this edition of the Prospect Show on ASTV Productions. I'm your host, Graham Forsyth. Happy to be back on this December 20th evening. Uh, this is the last edition of the Prospect Show for the year of 2021. Uh, wasn't able to get a huge guest lineup today, but we got a great guest on the show. I'll get into that in just a moment. But tonight's edition of the Prospect Show is brought to you by Toby Hockey, Case Financial Group, and our good friends over at Pilot Mount Hockey Academy. And speaking of the guests who will be joining tonight's edition of the show, it's Mr. MCN himself, Matt Gorman, owner of MCN Sports Advising. He joins this week's edition of the MCN Sports Advising segment to talk about how the year of 2021 has gone for MCN. Uh, we dive into the WHL draft. Uh, Matt can have some good uh, wisdom for hockey players on that one that are going through the WHL draft for sure. And uh, as well, we get into the plans for what 2022 has in store for MCN Sports Advising. Uh, so we only got one guest on the show here tonight, which is unfortunate. I did want more players, uh, well, more guests on the show. I wanted to get some uh, highly touted prospects and I wanted to do an addition of player analysis, but that just wasn't possible this week on on the show. Uh, don't worry, player analysis will be returning come 2022, so get excited for that. But um, later on in the show, I I'm going to be uh, doing this solo. I'm going to be uh, taking you guys through some of the notable players that were selected in the 2021 WHL draft in the first round, talking about uh, some some impressive players that were taken in that round, and uh, as well as some other things as well to do with the WHL draft in the first round. But without further ado, let's bring on Matt Gorman, uh, owner of MCN Sports Advising. After the intro of the Prospect Show, we'll also throw it to a commercial break to start off the show as well. But uh, you're watching the Prospect Show on ASTD Productions with Matt Gorman coming up next after the intro and this commercial break here on ASTD Productions. <laughs> Just kidding, folks. We are going to dive right into the interview. Uh, going to be joined now by Matt Gorman, uh, the owner of MCN Sports Advising here on the Prospect Show on ASTV. Now here on uh, the Prospect Show on ASTV on the MCN Sports Advising segment is none other than Mr. MCN himself. Uh, Matt Gorman, owner of MCN Sports Advising, joining the show here on this December 20th, Monday. Uh, you know, Matt, it's been a while since the last time that we've talked. Uh, talk about, you know, uh, what, what's been happening with MCN uh, from, you know, how you're seeing it. You know, the, the way that uh, 2021 has gone since the last time we've talked. Well, yeah, thanks for having me on again, Graham. I always enjoy this with you. You, you, you make it really easy for an amateur like me here. But uh um, you know what, 2021, uh, it's been fantastic, actually, just to to be back in the, the hockey world and, and being able to to get out and watch the kids play and do what they love to do. And 
you know, as mentioned before, I've got three daughters that uh, that I I value watching and being a fan and and cheering them on, just like the next person. And just the fact that we're able to be out and about and part of uh, you know the hockey rinks and the soccer stadiums and all that good stuff, it makes for busy times. But uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the Christmas season coming and and getting a little rest from everything because it yeah. has been just full bore um, since the beginning of uh, essentially August. You know, we've been uh, in the rinks watching uh, lots of hockey and, and, you know, having lots of discussions with teams and the, the skills development side where we're on the ice. Probably our team of guys are at least three hours a night, um, every night. So it uh, you're, you're wearing your skates a lot. Yeah, and uh, you're, you're not lying. 2021 since August has been very busy for you guys. I know I've tried to get you on the show multiple times, but you've been so busy with that, everything you guys are doing. And uh, I know that you, like the last time that we talked, the first time that we talked here on the show, uh, you, you like to get out and kind of, you know, market the, the company, MCN, you know, let these teams know what uh, you guys do. What's that been like, you know, having uh, hockey back in full swing here in 2021? seeing some normalcy in that, just uh, being able to, to reach out to even more teams and grow the, the name of MCN. Yeah, you know what? It has been, uh, it, it's definitely enjoyable when you can go to the showcases and and and, and see some of the faces from the past, even, you know, because it was uh, almost two years since we were able to go into those rinks and, and be part of those show, showcases and seeing some of the junior coaches that you knew before and meeting a, a few of the new ones and, you know, even uh, the university and the, the pro scouts and, you know, being able to go in there and have discussions with them face to face and, you know, get to know the people. And, and um, you know, the phone is great. The the Zooms are fantastic, but there's nothing better than getting right into the uh, the same room and the same atmosphere as someone else and being able to discuss uh, what we love to discuss. And that's uh, essentially the game of hockey and and some of the kids that are up and coming and, and, and where they're heading and, you know, watching them grow as uh, young men and, and ladies, of course. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, face to face communication, you know, making yourself available in person is uh, such a huge thing. And I feel like it's something that some people shy away from nowadays because technology is just so convenient. It's right at uh, in your fingertips uh, a lot of the times and, uh, you know, being able to have that face to face uh, human human connection is just great to see that you guys, uh, you know, really uh uh, emphasize that, uh, you know, talking about, you know, the amount of hockey you guys have watched, obviously it's been a lot, but, uh, talk about, you know, the amount of work you guys have been able to do with, uh, the athletes that you advise this year on the hockey side of things. Well, you know, just scream for, for the fact that the game's starting up and, and, and being uh, able to watch and, and view a lot of video, the team of guys are always watching and, you know, Dustin Neal and, and Tanner, they're, uh, they're active on these uh, on the hockey TV side of things, and and we the the hockey's right at the fingertips, and being able to go in live to games and 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 watching, you know, as far as a a uh, constructive way of, of looking at the game and assisting the, the players through, maybe uh, um, you know looking at things a little differently in certain circumstances with their skill side of things. Um, you know, maybe it's just a, the style of shot that they take in, in certain areas, being able to go over those little details. Maybe it's, you know, something as little as uh, being able to respond after uh, making a rough pass, you know, giving some perspective to the young players. And the fact that they're playing games again, it allows for us to go in there and, and be active in that and, and helping from that side of things um, for their development and their understanding of the game um, going forward. Um, so it, it's quite a bit different than the last year where it was everything was just practicing and, and skill sessions. And, you know, for uh, for one night, you know, getting to go out and work with the kids and the, the, the teams and the skill side, we, we all know that you play the game for game to, to play games and to be able to go in this year and watch the hockey, have the kids back on the ice and give the little tidbits of of um, of reference to their games. It was just uh, it was really enjoyable. 
Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, just getting to, you know, work with, with players, you know, working off their game film, uh, what they've done in games, definitely such a such a huge component of, uh, you know, just getting those hockey players to the next level. Uh, talk about it, though. You know, obviously, every kid is different in the way they shoot, the way they skate, the way they do things. Not every player is going to be the same. Uh, how do you handle, you know, as a trainer, as an advisor, uh, you know, handling – trying to, you know, help these kids develop to, to the best way that, that suits their playing style out there, catering to, you know, many different styles out there. You're 100% on that, Graham. And, and you know, a lot of uh, a lot of people talk about the comparisons of players and, 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 and a lot of parents like to, you know, compare their kids to another young person and, 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 and compare their games. And, I always try to, to, you know, put that to real stop and because it, it's, it, it just does nothing positive when you start to compare the kids per se, because every player is different. Every young player brings some different component to a team that uh, another doesn't, whether they pass well or they're just a shooter or, you know, maybe one player just goes in the corner a little bit more often and wins those puck battles. And, you know, so no one player is alike, like, as you mentioned there, and, and being able to go through and, and, and piece together, you know, the, the the style of players and the understanding of the game and each attribute is where we come in. We we never come in, I'll never come in on a on a on a game and, and sit there and try to tell a young man where to go when when that's not our role. That's the role of the coach and, and he's guided through the, the system of the coach and the requests of the coach. Whereas we come in and we can determine, you know, you when, when a player's taking a backhand, for instance, and the location of that backhand and and how to activate on that backhand by breaking down that uh, that uh, type of shot, for example, and and giving some perspective of body angle, head positions, foot positions, and that type of stuff to to assist the players and and hopefully uh, just a, a little tidbit gets into their their minds and, and they start to think about those things when those situations arise again um, the next time it comes that way for them. Yeah. And, you know, you really do got to, you know, work with uh, many different players differently because like, like you said, every player is different out there. And it's great that you guys have been able to do that and find what works for these players. Uh, talking about it, you know, uh, talk about the, the number of new players you guys have, uh, you know, gone on board on the team so far, you know, throughout 2021 since August as, you know, the, the number grown at all. Uh, give us some specifics on that. It is, a, you know what we uh, we 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 really uh, it, it has been a lot of word word by mouth here as far as our the clientele and I, I think that's a, the 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 best way and the the the, uh, the way that we'd like it as a company is as far as people just uh, believing in what we do and how we assist and you know obviously I mentioned before we don't make the teams for any young person and um, but I, I believe that uh, through the mentoring side and the guidance and. And the positive reinforcement, basically uh, giving the, the the constructive side and and always positive. I, I really believe that makes these kids flourish. So everything that we've we've had has really come through word of mouth, and I I just uh, that just is so uh, gratifying from from my end to know that people believe in in the way we treat the kids and the way that we treat the families as a whole. And and we've brought on some young 07s just recently. Uh, um, Noah Hallett from Okotoks, U15, 07 D man. Um, Rowan McDonald from the Pack Saints is a big forward that uh, has created some scoring opportunities and he's um, just a, an all round battler and, and he, he likes to score goals. Um, Ashton Brown out of Sherwood Park, he, he's been a young uh, N07 that uh, he, he just works so hard and, and offensively he's, he's putting up the numbers and and learning the game too, which is very important to, to understand. Everyone likes to to talk stats and talk points and look at the game sheets. Well, it tells a really small tale of what the game is for the individual player and what they bring to the team. Um, you know, we we just brought on a young guy, Bryce Kohler, from the the Saints Academy here, or and the Saints HSL program in 07. And you know, he, he's a player that plays with lots of energy and just wants to learn every single time he steps on the ice. And, you know, those, those are the types of kids that we, we, we really enjoy working with. And we, we've been able to bring them on to the MCN family and our, 
our team of mentors plan on uh, treating them uh, just like we do all the other families, being there for them to support them through this high and low of the game, you know, and, and the uncertainties. And, and you know, as far as uh, the growth of the MCN side, we've, yeah, it, it's been coming along and it just kind of starts to, to come together just like your your team dynamics i guess the right. success comes and it's all about the team side so yeah it's it's very exciting from that that point last question before we go to a commercial break here matt uh you know obviously you know because you're the owner of mcn we talked about this how uh, we've been doing the mcn sports advising segment here and i've had the chance to interview uh, a bunch of great hockey players that you guys represent and they always have nothing but great things to say about you and the company and how they are treated with mcn just how how much does that do for you in terms of just the, the pride you have that what you guys are preaching what you guys are doing is truly working for these young athletes well Graham you know I yeah and I think everybody can attest to this that's uh, maybe listening and that has played the game or played a different sport over the years I think every coach or individual that's come into play as far as your your upbringing and going through the the system of minor hockey and in um, even into the, the the minor pros and in junior hockey you you always look at the coaches that uh made an impact on on the person that you are and the, the way that you want to treat others and you know obviously there's times that you're going man i just i i wouldn't want to be that type of person the, the way that you felt in a certain circumstance in in a in a team environment and and you use those tools and and the experiences over those years to to uh you know reflect on and, and basically carry it forward the positive side of things that you and how you want to be remembered as a, a hockey person and a and just a, a person that uh, loved the game and and a, a person of society that uh you, you like to think that uh people respect and and appreciate the the honesty and and more so just uh, the positivity as opposed to negativity you know so it's it's one of those things i i, I value that in a huge way as far as what uh what the kids take from our MCN side and, and, and what it leaves for them in the future. And I've always said, I, I never want to uh, be that person has to, to apologize in the future for, for my wrongdoings to a, a young person. And um, I, I definitely believe in that. And as does my team of guys. Yeah, it's great that, uh, you know, the, the message that you, you guys uh, have bought into as a company is truly working. And uh, I've been seeing that with just the, the great young athletes that you guys got aboard on uh, in MCN Sports Advising. Uh, we'll take a quick commercial break here, Matt, coming up after the break. We'll talk a bit about the uh, WHL draft that re that recently happened here in 2021, as well as the, the plans for 2022 for MCN Sports Advising. I'm joined by MCN Sports Advising owner Matt Gorman on this edition of the MCN Sports Advising segment on the Prospect Show. We'll be back in just a moment after this commercial break. Welcome back to the Prospect Show. This week's edition of the MCN Sports Advising segment uh, features the owner of MCN Sports Advising, Matt Gorman. Me and Matt have just been talking about, you know, what's been happening with the uh, advising company, MCN, uh, since the last time that me and him have talked here on the show, as well as talking about, you know, getting out and seeing hockey again, seeing these kids play, and just uh, some other things as well. But Matt, uh, of course, the WH draft happened recently uh, about two weeks ago now uh you know you had some players uh you know in mcn that were eligible for the draft uh, i'm not too sure if any of them got drafted but uh talk about you know the the number of players that you guys had eligible of course uh, i had a chance to interview lyndon gorman on the show uh, I'm, I'm forgetting the names off the top of my head but had a, had a chance to interview some of those prospects but uh how many players from mcn did we see uh, eligible for this year's whl draft 
So we had, uh, yeah, thanks, Graham. Uh, we had four 06 uh, candidates for the draft this uh, this last draft over the two weeks. And we had one uh, drafted, Lyndon Donald Gorman, um, oh. Everett. And, and you know, it uh, that draft is always a tough time. That, that's one thing I got to say, you know, over the almost nine years of, of doing this and, you know, the, uh, the draft is a, is a, is a tough time for a lot of kids and their families. And we always go on the side of caution with this draft and, you know, trying to help the families understand that um, just because their son isn't drafted to the WHL um, doesn't mean that they can't go and play in the WHL. And we, we, we speak a lot to the families in, in preparing them for the, the, um, the, the potential that their son may not be drafted. We, we speak a lot more on the side of not being drafted than being drafted, to be honest, Graham. Um, just for the fact that so many hopes are, are involved in this draft and, and, and so much emphasis from the, the kids themselves and, you know, even the family members, it's, it's a stressful time for them. And we, we, we know how, and, and I know that you've been around this a long time too, Graham, and seen how it's processed. And um, you just never know how the draft goes. Right. And yeah. it, it's so uncertain and unpredictable that uh, no one can really tell. So it's we it, it's been a it's been an emotional roller coaster for a lot of families. Yeah, and just speaking about that process, like uh, I've seen like people do a lot of mock drafts of where they think players are going to go. I think on even some of the mock drafts, one of the highest players on the board didn't even get drafted from what I saw. Uh, you know, a lot of kids fell, a lot of kids went higher than like people would have expected. It's just interesting how these teams view, you know, the, long, the young talent as opposed to other people in the WHL draft. But you're right. You're, you're so right in that. It's it's so uncertain of what is going to go down in a draft like this because they are drafting kids after all, like these kids mm -hmm. being 15 years old at the time. Uh, you know, but talking about that, uh, hel helping these players through the process, making it easy for the players to, you know, obviously they'll, they'll still be thinking about the WHL draft as it's coming up, but you guys taking the load off of these players by handling, talking to the teams and the things that you do to make it so easy for these players through this process. Yeah. So that's, that's a really important part of our, our company is again, that comes down to the mentoring and understanding of what happens in this game, you know, and, and understanding that uh, uh, the game doesn't really owe you anything. And I say that quite often. And I say that, uh, you know, honestly, the, the game will not, uh, um, you know, it, it's not where you can sit there and go, Hey, I'm guaranteed to be drafted or I'm guaranteed this. Cause you just, you never know what the teams are looking for. For example, they may be looking for a goalie or they're looking into their depth side where they're, they're, they're needing a right shot D man. And, you know, again, it comes down to that comparison idea between the young players and, and looking at themselves and, and going, well, you know, when I skate just as good as so-and-so and, and, and I potentially should have been drafted. And, and, and a lot of times you could, you could agree with a lot of the, the, the things that the kids compare themselves on, but, at the end of the day, it's uh, decisions that are made through, uh, you know, a couple of years of looking at the players and the scouts um, of the Western League and the GMs and the, the coaches. They do their homework and they they really uh, it, it's been a real um, with the COVID situation. They, they've had a lot of a lot of work to, to do in this end of things. And I think that uh, um, with the, the, the games not being played last year, it has just added so many more dynamics to their jobs. And I think that we'll we'll look at going forward and 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 seeing a lot of these kids that weren't necessarily uh, um, in the in the drafted lists, but uh, they'll potentially go on and, and maybe play in the Western Hockey League as time goes on. Um, from our side of things, looking at um, helping the families understand, talking with mom and dad, and and helping the kids um, go through the the um the highs and lows of the emotions of this the, the teams are contacting them sending them questionnaires and asking questions about their personal lives and and their their wants and you know and a lot of the kids they take that as an indication that they're potentially going to be drafted you know in the western league and it's it's a it's it's not a false hope but it kind of is just a it's a process for the western league teams to get to know the kids and if the kids take it that way where they're going well you know what i got 
I had 10, 11 uh, questionnaires to fill out and, and, and basically thinking that this is uh, they're, they're, they're on the, on the way to the draft. It, it's just not the way it is. It, it's just not what happens with that. There's times that kids are called the night before the draft and ask questions from the scouts and, and the scouts are doing their jobs. That's all there is to it. They're doing their jobs and asking the questions and showing that interest. And we'll get calls the night before the draft going, you know what? I, I heard from so-and-so and, 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 and I'll, I'll be on a side going, well, guys, you know what? That's fantastic. But let's just keep this at a, where it is. It was a phone call. It was great that they contacted you. It was great that they, they, they took the time for you, but don't get your hopes up. And, and nine times out of 10 Graham, we're, we're right in that to, to be honest. The, the call for the draft just doesn't come their way, but eventually after a, a few months pass, they're going to camp and they're, they're settling into a Western league opportunity, you know? So that's, uh, that's a lot of, uh, you know, the, the way that we, we get to be part of it. Yeah, and uh, you're so right. I, I think I've said it before on the show as well. If you don't get drafted, it's not the end for these kids. Like, they could get opportunities uh, at the Western Hockey League level or, you know, down the line they could end up getting college opportunities, which, uh, which is awesome as well, and they could play uh, junior A hockey or something like that, which is there's just so much opportunity in the sport and uh, should never never close your, your door. Uh, you know, just because you, you know, can, didn't get drafted to the WHL like you wanted to, or if you're in the Ontario Hockey League draft pool, uh, and so on, so on, so on, so forth. Uh, but, you know, talking about it, not getting drafted, how that's something you guys kind of, you know, explain to these families more than the process about getting drafted. Uh, you know, talk about, you know, how, how huge that is in terms of just, uh, you know, the, the message you guys put behind, you know, the, the draft process like this, which can be super complicated in the dub. Yeah, and I, I, I don't want to under undervalue the, the players that have been drafted because it's a huge compliment. So by no means would I ever want to uh, discount that end of things. But um, the kids that are drafted – uh, you know, congratulations every all the time is in order for those young people and uh, the compliments need to be there. But there's more kids that aren't drafted than, than are. And it's, it's it's the message of understanding that um, going here on in for, for hockey, you, you don't know if you're going to play triple A's or you're going to play double A's. And it's a it's a learning process. And and the game of hockey to, to potentially play until you're 30 years old, for example, it's a it's a game of highs and lows and, and understanding at the younger ages is very important to to know that um just because that opportunity closes it, it's up to them to persevere and, and continue on with the work ethic and and understand that if they continue to develop um and working at the game and getting the sleep that they need and, and committing in the gym and, and staying away from the party scene as much as possible i know uh, you, you're going to do that at times everybody everybody does that of course but picking your times and, and really uh, believing in yourself and and working at the game, whether you're playing double A or A or triple A, um, learning those those lessons at the younger ages, preparing them for the fact that just because you play junior hockey doesn't mean that you're going to play every night. There might be times that you are sitting taking stats. That is just the way the game goes. And understanding that, I think uh, it, it lightens the load when it does happen to them. Because then you can go, well, you know what? I did see this a little bit, or I did hear this. And from our side of things, as we mentioned in every discussion with families, that uh, um, I'd rather give the, the honesty about the game as opposed to the lights and cameras and, and all the, uh, you know, obviously I love talking about those things too because that's important. But giving a real view of what the game is about is, is probably most important from our end. Yeah, I got to keep it real with uh, these families, just uh, given the harsh reality, because this this game can be kind, uh, like, as you know, and this game can be, uh, you know, mean to some players, but it's just that harsh reality of just knowing that it's not going to work the same way for, for one kid as it is going to work for the other. 
right? Or a player mm-hmm. you know, as another player. But, uh, you know, moving away from the WHL draft now, moving away from that, uh, talking about the plans for MCN in uh, 2022, uh, you know, anything big on tap for you guys in terms of uh, any big tournaments you guys are going to, uh, how you guys are going to continue to grow, uh, what, what's going to be the mindset and the plan heading into 2022 at this point? Well, you know what? We're, we're, we're really excited about the, uh, the upcoming year. We're, we're, we're active in the, the on ice skills development and we're, we're active in the advising side. And, um, you know, we actually have a, a 2010 uh, spring team that has uh, been organized uh, and it wasn't organized by myself. It was basically a, a friend of mine that had uh, a few young players that uh, wanted to participate in the spring, but basically have a, a, um, a spring team that wasn't consisting of the whole spring and summer. It was a, it was more suited for a six week program, six to 10 week program and, uh, and, and less hockey per se, so that it leaves a little bit more allowance for going to the lake and doing their water skiing and that type of thing. And, and from the MCN side, uh, our team of guys will be part of that. Our goalie uh, instructors will be part of that end and we'll do some of the skills and, Basically, it's just a minimized uh, spring league team um, with the the skills development that the kids are hoping for and the parents are hoping for. So we're really excited about that. And and going through it, uh, we we've decided that uh, uh, it was more so a, a lot to do with my wife Tara. She's who organized uh, the 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 spring team, and they put it as the MCN Pirates for the first ever spring league team that we're going to have. And it's kind of a uh, um, her and, and, and a friend, Chris Kelbert to organize this team. And I've been kind of sitting out and, and I, letting them take over this. And we, we ended up calling the team, the pirates over and, and, and it was named after a team that I played with in Italy. That's dear to my heart, the Epiano pirates. And I, I, I still sport the helmet there from those days. And I, I, my, my love of the game is still there in Italy and basically, uh, yeah. So it's quite, uh, It'll be a fun spring for us, and we're excited to be part of the young uh, 2010 program with this team. Yeah, that's going to be awesome, awesome that. Uh, the team is taking on a name that, uh, you know, is uh, kind of named after a team that uh, is dear to your heart, near and dear to your heart, like you said. But uh, last question before we end things off here, Matt. Uh, you know, I've seen the training facilities. We've talked about the training facilities that you guys got. They look absolutely awesome. I know that uh, the, the players here on the show that I've had on that have had a chance to train in your guys' training facilities say it's absolutely awesome. Awesome. What's uh, going to be the plans for the training facilities uh, moving forward here in 2022 in terms of, you know, what you guys are going to do in terms of work in those facilities? You know, we, we have the U13 double teams in, in both Spruce Grove and Stony Plain and U11 double A teams. And so basically the young teams are coming in there over the duration of this season and and doing getting their extra training in and and, and focusing on fun is what it is. They go in there, they play some floor ball, they, right. they, they learn some stick handling moves and shooting and passing and um, going into the, the springtime and the 2022 here, we plan on, uh, um, you know, just continuing to offer that service to the, the young players and uh, even the players that, uh, the, the kids that just want to play some floor ball, you know, coming in there and enjoying that game that maybe they don't skate or they can't afford to skate. They can come in there and, and still have some fun playing some three on three games and, and learning a few things at the same time. Well, that's awesome. Uh, awesome that these young kids, these young teams get an opportunity to work with you guys and the training facilities and, uh, you know, great that you guys have some awesome stuff planned for 2022. Uh, I'm sure that we'll be talking about it in, in the near future, Matt, when you come on the show once again, the Prospect Show on uh, MCN Sports Advice in the segment here this week with none other than the owner himself, Mr. MCN, Matt Gorman, joining the show here on uh, this Monday. Matt, until we talk next, uh, you know, you keep up with your busy schedule, continue to get things done, and uh, Merry Christmas to you and the rest of the MCN crew. Uh, happy holidays. Merry Christmas to you too, Graham. Thanks for having me. You make it easy, buddy. Every time I say that, and it's so true, so thanks for that. 
Well, great. It's awesome to hear from uh, my my point of view there, Matt, just uh, the, the compliments that you give us here at ASTV. You take care and stay safe. And like I said, happy holidays and Merry Christmas, Matt. Merry Christmas, man. Thank you. And Matt Gorman, owner of MCN Sports Advising, joining the show here on this Monday, December 20th date here in 2021. And of course, this is the last episode of the Prospect Show of 2021, last show of the year, which is crazy. The year just flew by. I know that we were uh, on a hiatus on the Prospect Show for a while, but since uh, it's been back here on the network, it's been absolutely phenomenal just to see the support that this show has gotten and uh, week in and week out. And I want to thank you, the viewer, for uh, making that happen, of course, um, as well as I want to thank Matt Gorman for coming on the show tonight. Uh, Mr. MCN, as I like to call him, that that's the new nickname I have for him with him being the owner of MCN Sports Advising. But coming up after the break, I'm uh, not sure how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to try my best uh, because there's a lot of great talent that was picked in the WHL draft. Uh, just a while ago, as the draft happened recently, of course, uh, in the first round of that draft, looking at it, 22 players got selected to 22 different franchises in the WHL. I'll come back after this commercial break and uh, take you guys through some of the notable players that I saw that were taken in the first round of the WHL draft. You're watching uh, ASTV Productions. Well, you're watching on ASTV Productions, this edition of the Prospect Show here on ASTV. Back for more after this commercial break. Welcome to Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mountain Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on ice coaching propel our students to the next level both mentally and physically in a professional environment Welcome back to the Prospect Show here on ASTV Productions. Of course, Matt Gorman joined the show on this week's edition of the Prospect Show. He will be the only guest in tonight's episode. Like I said in the intro, I wanted to get more guests on the show. I wanted to get some highly touted prospects, uh, some players that went high up in the WHL draft this year, but it just wasn't meant to be. But don't worry, uh, I'm trying to get that in the works. And to getting some highly touted prospects on the show that were drafted in the WHL this year, as well as uh, we'll be moving on to talking to 2007 born players, as that is the next age group up in the WHL draft uh, coming up in the spring. But but uh, the WHL draft, looking at it, it all went down, um, I think, about two weeks ago now. I'm remembering off the top of my head. Anyways, uh, let's let's take a look at the calendar here just to refresh my memory. Um, <laughs> looking at it here. Yeah, about two weeks ago now. Uh, a bunch of prospects that uh, entered into the WHL draft got drafted. 22 players got selected in the first round as there are 22 franchises in the WHL. And let's uh, take a look at how that first round went uh, right now. Looking at, the, here we go. So if you guys can see it, I'm not sure how clearly you guys can see it, but Berkeley Cadden of, 
uh, the Saskatoon Contacts U18 AAA team. He played with that team for a short stint back in the 2022, in the 2020-2021 season. Uh, didn't really get much of a season that year for uh, Berkeley and the rest of the players here in uh, Canada because of COVID-19 shutting it down. Um, you know, after Macklin Celebrini went first overall in the U.S. Priority WHL draft, which I was surprised about. I still don't know how that happened because I thought that was for U.S. born players. But I guess since Macklin played for Shattuck St. Mary's, where Berkeley is also playing this year, I guess with him uh, for Macklin spending a year in Shattuck uh, in Minnesota there, I guess he became eligible for the uh, U.S. priority draft. But uh, Macklin went first overall to the Seattle Thunderbirds and that congratulations to Macklin, uh, a guest that we've had here on the Prospect Show. You guys can check out that interview uh, somewhere in the Prospect Show playlist on our Facebook and on our YouTube as well. But after he went uh, off the board, uh, going first in the U.S. priority WHL draft, it, it was no question that Berkeley Cadden was going to go first overall in the WHL draft. There, there was no debate there. You just look at what he's been able to do. Like back in 2019, 2020, I believe he was an underage here. I could be wrong on this, but with the Saskatoon Bandits U15 team, he put up 108 points in 30 games played this season. He's been having a nice season with Shattuck St. Mary's U16 team as he has 23 points in 15 games played. And this is a player just such a creative hockey mind. Uh, always looking to to make the creative plays out there, and a player that makes the efficient plays as well. He, he's good with his stick. He's got really good positioning, and he, he's a really good skater as well. Uh, nice release on his shot. He's got all the tools in his bag to you know continue to develop into a, an elite hockey player at that next level. And I have no. Uh, doubt in my mind that Mac that Berkeley will be able to do that. Moving on to the second overall pick, uh, Jordan Gavin of uh, Delta Hockey Academy U17 prep. Like you look at this kid, and this guy is one of the best goal scorers in the the draft. A guy that just knows where to be on the ice at all times in the offensive zone to to give his teammates an option to to pass to a scoring threat like him. And back in 2019, 2020, with Delta Hockey Academy U15, he put up 66 points in 30 games played. Not too bad. But you look at this season as a 15 year old playing against older competition for uh, Delta Hockey. Academy U17, uh, not too bad, 50, 58 points in 14 games played. And this is a guy, if you look at, uh, you know, Jordan Gavin, he, he can not only put that puck in the net, but he, he can also, you know, dish that puck at a nice level as well. And uh, just speaking of Delta Hockey Academy, well, they had a very nice day in terms of the players getting selected. Not only Jordan Gavin getting selected to Tri-City, um, the Tri-City Americans, Berkeley Cadden, just to, to clarify, he got uh, drafted first overall to the Spokane Chiefs. But you look at the other players that went from Delta Hockey Academy, three players in this uh, top 10 in the first round, Thomas Mercik going to Medicine Hat, and then uh, Miguel Marquez uh, going to the Lethbridge Hurricanes at 10th overall. But uh, looking at uh, a player in Charlie Ellick who went to the Brandon Weekings, uh, one of their um, three picks in the first round, um, Charlie Ellick, a uh, defenseman from the Edge School U18 prep team. He's already six foot two, 175 pounds. And from what I've seen, this is a guy that likes to uh, jump up in the play in the offensive zone and has a good shot. Um, this is a guy that has shown that he can be a playmaker as well, um, you know, putting up more assists and goals that he scored. Um, just looking at it this year, he has 14 points in 13 games played this season with the Edge U18 prep program. Uh, definitely for Brandon, uh, getting a kid that, you know, 
not afraid to, to jump up in the play and get aggressive in the offensive zone and get good shots on net, but also a kid that is uh, young, of course, being 2006, he's going to turn uh, a 2006 born player. He's going to turn 16 years old very soon. He's, he's already six foot, 275 pounds. If he continues to get into the gym, I'm not sure if he goes to the gym already, but he's going to put on some more weight. And, and this kid could, you know, very well become a monster. If he continues to grow, uh, Roger McQueen, one of the best playmakers in the draft going to Brandon with their second pick in the first round, uh, at number four with 28 points and 21 games played this year with Saskatoon. Guess what? He's an elite playmaker. He's got 21 assists. I'm pretty sure in one of his, season he put up over 50 assists as well he's a big kid as well at this point he's uh six foot three and a half and in terms of his height and 170 pounds so definitely uh gonna be interesting to see how he grows uh you know how much bigger he's gonna get as he is a uh, 2006 born player as well. And he's born later on in the year as he is born in October on the second, but uh, another player that, uh, you know, I, I think that teams got to be excited about. Well, one team in particular, since they picked him, the swift current uh, Broncos going out and getting Clark Caswell uh, Clark this season in the Manitoba triple a U 18 hockey league. Like you guys have seen that he's been on the show before, um, just looking at what Clark has been able to do this season, looking at his updated stats, um, he has 57 points in 24 games played. Pretty sure he's still averaging the most points per game in the league. And for Clark, he's not only a guy that can score, but a guy that can feed his teammates as well. Of course, uh, if you guys checked out player analysis when he was the first ever player, I had. I analyzed on the segment. I, I talked about his skating, how he's good on his edges. He's uh, also got some good foot speed, able to keep defenders off balance. He's good at creating separation for himself. He's a great playmaker with elite vision, uh, a guy with a good set of hands, and a guy that's just relentless on that forecheck, relentless on that puck. If the puck is loose, or even if you have the puck, uh, Clark is going to be there to attack. But I guess I'm looking at the, I guess you guys can see the stats there, switching back over here. But yeah, uh, TJ Ginla, uh, Jerome Ginla's son going ninth to the Seattle Thunderbirds, which uh, is going to be awesome to, to see uh, what Jerome Ginla's son is going to be able to do. Um, one more player that, or two more players I'll talk about here. Uh, Tyson Buchkowski, uh, I saw on a lot of, mocks that this guy they they had him listed as a top 10 draft pick he ends up going 15th to prince george the cougars and for tyson like this is one of the best offensive defensemen in the draft in my opinion a uh, guy that's six feet tall 166 pounds he's only going to get bigger as time goes along but this is a guy that's a good skater very reliable in his own end. Uh, I'm pretty sure when I talked to him, he said that one thing he's got to work on is being a bit more physical. Not too sure if that was him who said it, but if it is like Tyson, those are just parts of his game that are going to come with time. Uh, you know, he's having a pretty solid season this year with the Saskatoon Blazers. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he has 19 points in 25 games played, something like that. I could be wrong on that number, just thinking off the top of my head. But uh, for Tyson, like this is a guy that has shown he can put up 30 goals uh, in a season. He's a good stick handler, and he's a guy with uh, very good skating ability. And as a defenseman, a guy that is a two-way defenseman, maybe a bit more offensive than defensive, uh, th this could be – uh, a steal for Prince George, them getting him at number 15. And uh, this is my favorite pick of the draft just because of where he went to. Jonas Wu, of course, a guest here on the Prospect Show, had him on uh, recently on the show. Uh, just just a player that uh, can play a great 200-foot game, a really complete defenseman that is, you know, good with the stick, you know, just – looking at it here i want to look at my notes again that i had on him but 
you know, for uh, Jonas Wu, like the, this guy, he's solid on his breakouts, on his zone entries. He, you know, scans the ice very well for teammates on the breakouts. A good skater, you know, allows him to skate the puck out of the zone with efficiency. Good at protecting the puck. Uh, he's good at the zone entries, good foot speed, able to move laterally to evade the opposition. Gets pucks in deep. A, a very smart player, you know, really good in the offensive zone. Uh, gets in good position to shoot the puck at foot speed once again like susceptible with the puck he's got so many tools in his toolbox he's not only solid in his own end he's a good positionally sound player in my opinion uh really active stick keeps a good gap uh he's good in the neutral zone with his transition game transitioning the puck up and with his good vision and also in the offensive zone even though his shot isn't the hardest he's a guy that has an accurate shot in and his shot's only going to get more powerful as time goes along. But for Jonas going to the Winnipeg Ice, uh, playing in his hometown of Winnipeg for years to come for the ice, and also getting to uh, play under his father in uh, Larry Wu, as I believe Larry is an assistant for the Winnipeg Ice now. But looking at this draft in general, I uh, want to congratulate all of the players that uh, got drafted this year in the whl draft uh in that first round and just in the other rounds as well i want to uh congratulate uh clark caswell um let's see who else tyson buchkowski uh jonas Wu, and taryn smith defenseman for the saskatoon blazers on going to everett uh players that i've had on the show before i also want to thank uh the other guys that i've had on the show not thank the guys, but congratulate the other guys that I've had on the show before. And Trey Wilk um, of the Saskatoon Blazers. Now he went 29th in the second round to uh, Lethbridge. He plays on the Saskatoon Blazers. Uh, I also want to uh, congratulate. Oh, man. I'm looking down the list here. Uh, I want to congratulate Riley Ash for going number 56 overall in the third round to the Prince George Cougars as well. Um, you know, looking at it, just all, all the players that I've had here on the show, old Raiden Zacharias going to Regina, uh, fourth round, 75th pick overall. Um, I, yeah, that's, that's about all the names I'm seeing here. I'm going to keep going down. Uh, I want to congratulate Lyndon uh, Donald Gorman for going to Everett, like Matt said as well. Uh, I know that that was a, a huge moment for him. It must have been for his family. I'm not quite sure where he got drafted. I'm looking down the list here. But huge congratulations to him. He was so adamant of how he wanted to, to get drafted to the WHL and uh, must have meant so much for not only, uh, you know, uh, Lyndon, but uh, his family as well. Um, and yeah, uh, I want to congratulate just, uh, oh, here he is. Lyndon Donald Gorman went 158th overall, eighth round pick to the Everett uh to everett uh, a trade uh, a pick that they acquired from a trade with the swift current broncos so yeah um everyone who got drafted to the whl uh congratulations congratulations to macklin celebrini uh clark caswell jonas Wu, and the rest of the players that I i've had on the show here for for going in the whl draft huge moment for you guys i'm sure you guys have soaked it in so much already and are ready to get to that next level just keep working hard and you'll be at that next level you, you made it through the first step you got drafted and now you have a chance to you know prove that maybe you can play at that level in the whl against you know some of the best well against the best junior hockey players here in western canada um but also you know, I've said this a lot. If you didn't get drafted, you know, disappointing for sure. But it's not the end of the road. Like Matt said, you could get WHL opportunities down the road. Uh, like I've said, like if you don't go to the WHL, you could end up getting uh, a scholarship to college at some point. You could end up playing junior A hockey, and then maybe that could lead to something. There's so many roads that you can take in hockey, and it's one of the hardest things to do ever is make the NHL, uh, making a pro league like that. Uh, the odds are, are very, 
very stacked against uh, a lot of players in doing that. But, you know, you just continue to put in the work, continue to develop and mature into, you know, a professional, respectable young man. Or if you're a woman, you know, turn into a respectable young woman and just learn, you know, learn to be mature, learn to take it on the chin. It's not always going to go the way you want if you didn't get drafted to the WHL. And hey, that's okay because there are so many opportunities to further your hockey development uh, and potentially make it to the WHL if that is your goal down the line. Uh, just continue to work at it, continue putting put in the work, and uh, good things will happen. So that is going to do it for this edition of the Prospect Show on ASTV Productions. I've been your host, Graham Forsyth. I want to thank the sponsors of today's episode in Toby Hockey, uh, Case Financial Group, and Pilot Mount Hockey Academy. I want to once again thank Matt Gorman for coming on the show and being the guest in the final edition of the Prospect Show for 2021. And uh, I want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to tonight's episode, and not only in to tonight's episode but if you've been tuning in before on the prospect show i want to thank you guys for all your support that you've given us here in 2021 and even before that when we first started off uh you know the first ever edition of the prospect show aired just uh i think a year and two days ago today so that's pretty crazy to look back and uh you know look at the times like that and yeah first ever interview with connor geeky was pretty darn cool uh, as he should be a pretty high pick in this year's upcoming nhl draft but uh to all the viewers out there that have uh you know committed their time to watching the prospect show here on astv and listening to me uh, ramble on like I always do, like I am doing now and listening to me interview this great talent throughout North America and the hockey scene here in amateur sports, uh, interviewing the, the future of the game. Uh, you know, it's been a blast. Uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in, uh, and, you know, supporting ASTV. I want to wish you the viewer, uh, a Merry Christmas. Uh, if you don't celebrate Christmas, uh, happy holidays. Uh, I want to wish you a safe holidays as well. And if you do celebrate Christmas, uh, hopefully you guys get uh, the Christmas presents you want that you were asking for on your wish list. Hopefully you guys are able to spend a, a great time with family as well during Christmas, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and during the holiday season. Have some awesome Christmas food um leave down in the comments down below what your favorite christmas meal is but yeah um you know throughout this holiday break throughout christmas everyone just happy holidays merry christmas and thank you for choosing astv productions uh from everywhere from everyone here at astv productions uh including myself we want to thank you for tuning into the prospect show the prospect show will be returning in 2022 this january coming up so uh Stay tuned for that. But until then, folks, I've been your host of the Prospect Show, Graham Forsyth. Signing off now, wishing you guys, giving you a salute, and wishing you a happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful rest of your Monday night. Have a wonderful rest of your week as well. Stay safe out there. Stay safe during Christmas and during the holiday season. And uh, until 2022, folks, I'll see you then. Take care, everybody. Peace out.